Hello and welcome to the Everyday Project Manager. I'm Jeremy Nichols and today I'm going to be talking to you about managing your money using a cost plan. Obviously managing the money on a project is one of the sort of key core skills in project management but it's also a really useful and helpful life skill to have. And the principles are sort of the same from managing a project budget to managing a household budget or a small project budget for something you're doing at home. And we're gonna to look today at using a project cost plan to do that. Now, before you get scared and run away, a project cost plan doesn't have to be an, an enormous complicated spreadsheet. It's really quite a simple idea. Uh, and actually the best cost plans do adhere to just a few simple principles and should actually be really simple and easy to use. So we're gonna look at those principles today. Here we go. The first thing I want to talk to you about is the idea that every cost plan should tell a story. The very best cost plans, you look at them and you get a sense of the life of the project. And the way they do that is by being structured in a particular way that allows you to see where the project started, how it's going, and where you think it's going to end up. So I like to think of the best structure for a project cost plan as being having the past, present, and future built into the structure of the plan itself. Now that might seem overly complicated, but we're going to break down those three concepts about how you structure a project cost plan to tell the story of the past, the present, and the future, starting with the past. So the next point to think about is the fact that we don't deliver projects in a vacuum. Projects are living, breathing things, and we deliver them into a world that is constantly changing. And so a mistake that a lot of people make is to think that you set your project at the beginning and it must never deviate from that. And that's simply not the case. Things change all the time. The important thing to do and the skill comes from how you manage those changes and how you review your cost plan on a regular basis and make sure that it's adapting to those changes. So that's why I say your budget represents the past. It is what you think the project was going to cost at the outset, at a point in time, at the start of the project, but it will change. And it's very, very unusual for a project to set out its estimated cost at the start and then deliver exactly according to that. Things will change, they do change. You want to be able to hit that budget or stay under it, ideally, but don't think that what you think at the start you're gonna spend your money on is what you actually end up spending your money on. You'll spend more on certain things, you'll spend less on other things. There'll be things that you didn't anticipate at all that you might need to spend money on and things that you thought you were gonna spend money on that you actually don't end up needing. The important thing is how you adapt to that change, how your cost plan manages it, which takes us to the present. So the middle section of your cost plan represents the present, and that is simply what we have spent up until this point in time. And you need to be staying on top of this. So here is the key to managing your project budget. It is staying on top of it on a regular basis, not just having a budget up front and sticking it in a drawer and forgetting about it, not just looking at how you've spent at the end and going, well, how does that compare to how I thought I'd do, but actually constantly throughout the life of your project, looking at how much you're spending and where you're at. And that's the key to managing a project budget. So your present just tells you what you've spent to date for each of the line items that you had in your original project budget. So, so far we've got two columns, the past with our original budget and the present with our spend to date. That just tells you at this point in time, what have we spent so far? So although the budget might say we were estimating that we were gonna spend a thousand pounds on such and such over the life of the project. At this point in time, what have you actually spent on that thing? Um, and that will give you a total, a running total of how much you've spent of that original budget so far. So that's the present, it is simply, what have we spent so far? But it becomes very important when we start to look to the future. And now we find ourselves excitingly in the future, the final portion of our project cost plan. We had, very simply, the budget in our past section, in our present section, our spend to date. And for the future, I'm gonna introduce you to two concepts. First, our estimate to complete. So what do we now think, standing here at this point in time, we are gonna to have to spend over the remaining life of the project? And this doesn't matter what you've spent so far. It doesn't matter what you originally thought you were gonna spend. What, right now, do you think you're going to spend for the rest of the project? So look at all of those original line items you had, all the things that you thought you needed to spend money on, 
and then add anything else that you think you might now need to spend money on and add them up, your estimate to complete for the remaining of the remainder of the project. Look at where you are today, take stock of where you've got to, and then independent of the budget, independent of your spend to date, figure out how much left you have to spend. So that gives you your estimate to complete. Now we're gonna take two figures and add them together. That should be simple. Your spend to date from the present column and your estimate to complete from the future. Spend to date plus estimate to complete gives you your anticipated final cost. This is for each line item on that cost plan. Add up what you've spent so far and what you think you're going to need to spend to get to the end of your project. And that gives you your anticipated final cost. Now some of these line items will be up. Some of them you'll have spent slightly more on, some of them you'll be spent less on. Some you might not have thought that you were gonna spend money on and you actually haven't ended up needing to spend money on at all. Some you didn't think you were gonna to need to spend but have crept in as additional things that you actually now realize you need to spend money on if you're going to complete it. This happens all the time. There are ups and downs in project budgets constantly. But what's important is having a sense of where you are overall. So if you add up all the lines in your anticipated final cost column, you will have your final total project anticipated cost what you believe the project will cost you by the end of it. Now, if that's smaller than what you originally laid out in your budget, great, you're under budget. If it's the same, similarly, great, you're coming in on budget. Where you've got to have it to manage slightly is if your anticipated final cost is coming in at higher than your original budget. That suggests you're gonna spend more than you originally planned to. And at that point, you can go back and look at the individual line items and work out where can I spend less? Where can I cut some of the cost but still deliver what the project set out to deliver. Or you might come to the realization that actually at this point in time, I can no longer deliver the project for the original budget that I thought I could. But you're finding that out nice and early, not at the point where you've actually run out of money. So the anticipated final cost is a really useful tool to see into the future and understand where you're going to be overspending or underspending and so forth. So we've broken the project plus plan down into three sections, your past, your present, and your future. And taking the line through for each line item, each thing you think you're going to spend money on, have a line item in the budget column, understand what you're spending to date, review your spend to date regularly, and then readjust your forecast. Take a moment to go from this point, what am I gonna spend until the end of the project, your estimate to complete. Add your spend to date and your estimate to complete, and you end up at your anticipated final cost your overall view of what the project is now going to cost you when you complete it. And that will tell you where you might need to make savings, how you're doing, and the overall health of your project budget. I hope you found that useful. It's important to say that obviously, there is a project cost plan you can download from our website. Go to everydaypm.co.uk forward slash templates for a free project cost plan that you can download and use at will. And it follows these exact principles. So you should find it really straightforward and nice and easy to use. If you have used it, or if you plan on using it, let me know how you get on with it. Write to us at hello at everydaypm.co.uk. If you have enjoyed this video, if you have found it helpful, please hit like or subscribe. It helps other people find these videos too. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.